welcome to My Voices Have Tourette's, and that's why it began with a fringe. My name is Dan Zarin, and I'm your host. Let's get started here. So today's episode is brought to you by Gamesless Studio, where we are recording, The Secret Cellar, Iceland's first and only comedy club, and Smaude's Volcano Sauce is the greatest hot sauces I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, joining me today are two of my very dear friends. Uh, one of them is my co-host, you guessed it, Thodal or Thodatsun. Hey, I'm back again. You're back again. Well, I'm never going to get rid of you, I, am I? I never left. I I mean, I live here, so. Uh. I feel I feel like I, I decided one day, I was like, you know what? I should have Thodal as a co-host. Let's see how it goes. And then you just never left. I know. That's, uh, <laughs> that's why people don't, uh, you know, uh, say like, hey, come over to my place because I never leave. Like you talked, you yeah, talked, I, you talked in the, in the podcast about how you like we live together. You only live here because you're the co-host. Yeah, I, I mean, I live here because you said, "Hey, do you want to come over and maybe do a podcast?" I was like, "Yeah," and then I just moved in. I moved in, <laughs> and and I'm hoping <laughs> to get rid of you soon. Uh, but <laughs> boom, but joining us, uh, we have a, a very close friend of of, of the show and oh, of yeah. us. Uh, she she is uh, one of the the people in charge of the Reykjavik Fringe Festival, oh, uh, yeah. which has been going on for as long as my voices have Tourette's. But yeah. we will talk all about that. Uh, she also uh, was uh, the manager for the uh, the charity event we did, my or called Voices for Charity. Yeah, and she's also been the manager of my voices have Tourette's, mm. and we're gonna hear all from her. Let's hear it for Jessica Lamonaco. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I always I always love doing these like like grand openings where yeah. it's like, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Jessica Lamonaco, because there's no just, audience. No, just the pitch. That's all right. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you guys? Other good, than good. With each other forever. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I, ah, I, you know, I've, I've been trying to get rid of him. He, he's, he's. He he just never leaves. It's like herpes. It's <laughs> yeah. That's it's what like my mom it. always says about me. I'm like herpes. <laughs> You're like you know what you you are. You're like the reverse hair tie because with hair ties yeah. you drop them up, like anywhere and they're gone forever. Yeah. I don't know how. Like I don't know what the science is behind it, but you lose a hair tie, it's gone. Yeah. But with yeah. you, with you, you came in and yeah. you just stayed. I'm like I'm like hair from long haired people. You will find me in in your uh, just crevice uh, in your just uh, in your bed <laughs> under your foreskin. You're like I'm there. You're there. <laughs> Sounds cozy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but anyway, anyway uh, well, it actually looks, uh, I mean, the, the listeners can't really see this. I, I like, a, we said we got video and then we haven't really used it yet. No, um, really. We haven't really had any opportunities yet, but, but uh, look, you, your place looks really cozy. You have, you have the Christmas tree, you've got the lights, yeah. you've got the, 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 the random uh, candy cane thing. Yeah. The oh. one that since I'm a kid and we actually just finished, kind of almost finished moving into our new place. So oh, I, congratulations. I bought an apartment in Iceland, which was Wow. Okay, awful. <laughs> so you are crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I got this gig. <laughs> I like how I like how like like asking people to be in the show. It's like it like but for some people they feel like because of everything we've done, yeah. they're, they're like, oh, it's such an honor to be a part of it. Other people are like, are you insulting me? Yeah. <laughs> are you telling me there's something wrong with me? Or, or what, what? Fuck yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, for for the show, we literally have Jess as as the manager of the crazy. Yeah, I mean, to say my, how we are. That's my actual title in the group chat. That <laughs> uh, it's yeah. <laughs> If you, I'll be honest. If you put that on your resume ah, as as the job title was manager of the crazies, I would be massively honored. <laughs> I think I might just because I'm reapplying for a raise at my job currently, and I have to resubmit my CV and everything, and pretend like I don't know the person who I'm literally going to sit in her office and send it through. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. Um. Well. Uh, well. Anyway, to get to to get to the 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 I guess the meat and potatoes of this of this episode, <laughs> or uh, for for the vegans out there, the uh, potatoes and the potatoes. Yeah. Um, I. <laughs> I, uh, uh, so you are you are, are here because you do amazing things. Uh, and I, I want to start off by talking about the Fringe Festival. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, you, this is something that, uh, like, I was talking in the intro about how uh, this started as long as uh, my voices have Tourette's because uh, uh, it started in 2018. Mm -hmm. And my my voices have Tourette's began as a show at that Fringe Festival. Yeah. Yep. Um, how did, but, but I understand it, it, it wasn't supposed to start in 2018. <laughs> 
How did this whole thing come about? So um, the Fringe Festival was originally supposed to happen in Reykjavik in 2017. Uh, they did an open call and basically they got hundreds of applications because who doesn't want to come to Iceland? Who doesn't want to try it? And right. um, basically the people who were trying to organize it that year didn't realize just how much work it would be. So everything kind of just tapered off and didn't happen. So one of my best friends, Nanda Goodness, who's the other co-director of The Fringe with me, she was like, I really want to have a fringe here. She was one of the people who applied and was just like, hey, any updates on when this is happening? And the old managers were like, yeah, no, it's not. So next March after that, so March 2018, Nana goes, I think I'm going to just do the Fringe Festival myself. What do you think about that? And I was just like, cool, what do you need? <laughs> she answered, oh. I have no clue. What can you do? <laughs> yeah. So... It almost sounds like, it almost sounds like, I mean, if I, if I didn't know any better, it almost sounds like a couple comedians were trying to run it first. <laughs> <laughs> almost. You might think that. Almost. <laughs> Yeah, I feel, I feel like it's, it's, it's a little bit of Thetta Red Dust. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Things will work themselves out. Yeah. This isn't Thetta, this is Nana and Jess Red Dust. It's, yeah. <laughs> no, this is this is more like the tattoo I have. Thetta yeah. Red Dust Konski. Yeah. Yeah. Things yeah. might work themselves out. We'll yeah. find out. That first year, I mean, every year we're still at that same spot, basically. We're like, okay, the first year we had no clue whatsoever. Uh, we joined the uh, Nordic Fringe Network, which is a network of eight different fringe festivals in the Nordic countries and uh, we decided okay we're going full in so not only are we running a fringe festival but we're going to invite all of the NFN people out here to Iceland and host a bunch of events for them so that they can become enriched and we can try to figure out what the fuck we're doing um, <laughs> as we're running the fringe festival by the way so right. we just went in without a clue and hoping for the best and willing to do whatever it took to make it happen so we got completely lucky with you guys over at the cellar because if we didn't have such a solid venue, I don't know how we would have survived it. I mean, every year the secret cellar has been the greatest place to work with because we know you're there. We know that any fuck ups, we don't need to scramble. And we've had some epic fuck ups and <laughs> love telling the stories. <laughs> Like the time uh, we got a gig, uh, one of our venues was the National Theater, and we had a specialty um, tech person for that one lined up who managed to fall off his bike and get a concussion on opening night. Oh, Ooh. wow. Yeah. So that became a scramble to find someone who was familiar with doing tech in an unknown house without any backup because it was summer vacation for everyone at the National Theater. <laughs> oh. oh i don't i don't i don't feel like it's a it's, it's a it's almost not appropriate to say this but 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 i mean looking back at least it wasn't covid yeah i mean we <laughs> lucked out last year fringe 2020 we fell right between the waves and we were just making this awful joke that you know even if someone gets infected it's a two-week thing so our fringe is over in one week we can do this <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a, like the the fringe festival became the the covid quarantine yeah yeah, yeah. We, we were the only festival that successfully took place in Reykjavik this year Oh, well, well, and ah, uh, well, first of all, congratulations on that. And it, you guys did amazing for what you had. Um, but, but it's actually kind of interesting if you think about it, like, uh, well, like, I mean, it seems like in Iceland, when one thing starts up, it's like other things, uh, like, it's not just that they follow, it's just, they happen to start at the same time. Yeah. So, so it, ooh, like, if you think about the, like, like with the open mic scene, I yeah. mean, the open mic scene in Iceland in English, uh, started, uh, several years ago. And it was like that began, but it was also kind of like the start of a bunch of comedians. Uh, and also like short into very short into that was when a ton of like a bunch of us comedians that, that came from other countries came at the same time. Yeah. And then you have like 2018, which literally that, that was the start of the Fringe Festival. My Voices Have Tourette's and The Secret Seller in well, like yeah. pretty much at the exact same time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had we had we had The Secret Seller open, I think, for like like a month before the fringe festival I don't know, like, we were we, we started a comedy club and then they're like all right we're gonna do a festival we're gonna do a what now <laughs> that's the way to do it you go all in and if it doesn't work yeah, you tried something really cool and when it does work it's just like holy shit wow that's awesome 
<laughs> well, I, I got, I got to ask because, uh, oh, I mean, uh, so like, well, first of all, so what, what is your official title for the Fringe Festival now? Um, co-director and productions manager, but Nana told me I could choose any title. So I choose dinosaur coordinator. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That, How, is, yeah. that is an actual title from the movie Jurassic Park. We were having this conversation <laughs> over messenger and I was watching Jurassic Park, which is one of my favorite movies. And the credits came on as I was chatting with Nana and dinosaur coordinator popped up and I was like, I know what my title is. That's it. <laughs> Is it is it less of a copyright strike if we sing the theme song? Uh, we might be pushing it then. You know, if we, like, if we, if we, oh, what if what if we pull the vanilla ice uh, yeah. method? Like, what yeah. if we go da 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 da? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's completely different now. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I I gotta ask though. I mean, how do you, and look, I do I I mean this in the most loving way possible because because honestly. You are one of the most incredible people I've ever met. How do you how do you co-direct a festival while having anxiety, PTSD, and CPTSD? Uh, um, I just do it. It's you know I spend half that I sweat through my clothes and just show up and hope that my makeup stayed put. It's <laughs> because like like, like thought all there and I when we when we try to co we get like oh all these ideas and then we we go you know what we're gonna do this one and then it gets close to actually doing it and we're like we are not gonna do this one <laughs> yeah I think I think a lot of it has to do with Nana she is like my I call her my creative soulmate because she's the easiest person I've ever done any kind of show or production with so she's the only person I could see wanting to run a festival with. So the first year it was just me, Nana, and Sintri at the end, who was our financial manager at the time. Um, and we just created this team where no matter what was going down around us, we had each other's backs unquestioned. Like anything we needed, we were there to support each other and found out that we work really, really well together. So we did it because, you know, it was something we were passionate about and figured, okay, this is a stupid thought. How bad could it be? <laughs> but yeah. we found out that it's something we could actually do. And Nana's the ballsiest person I've ever met. So I pick up on, on a lot of her confidence and I'm the one who's really good at organizing shit. So when it comes to getting things done and trying to figure out what can happen, where my brain just clicks over into a different zone and i'm able to do it and then get the anxiety afterwards like i crash hardcore right before and right after the fringe it's <laughs> and we know like through a certain point of the fringe that there will be a giant fight between me and Sintri, who's the financial director because he's also <laughs> got his issues he could be on here he's also one of the tourette's people in iceland and all kinds of shit that comes with that so we know that it's about day four when me and Sintri are at each other's throats <laughs> and, so, and when that that actually happened on the night of your show in Tarknabio this year <laughs> ah. <laughs> Yeah, that's at some point, I think I just went backstage and hung out with you guys and said, I can deal with your shit so much easier than that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's bad. You know, it's bad when some, someone goes, OK, uh, the, the guys with every disorder on the planet, ah, I'm hanging out with you guys instead. Yeah. This guy's driving me crazy. In a tiny closed room backstage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I, I, I just think and I, I have to comment, though, because like. And uh, I want I want your your opinion on this, and I, I know that it's a weird opinion to ask for, okay. but whoa! I mean, now with 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 voices, we have performed uh, at four different French festivals, and I'm not I'm not. This isn't a lie, just because you're on uh, no, like because I'm talking to you. I have openly said this several times. The Reykjavik French Festival is my favorite. Uh, I think it's it's not even just that it's not even just that I uh, I like the festival. It's not that I like the location. Um, uh, it's just. I find it to be the most like professionally run. I find it to be well, like everything is very tight. I know this sounds really funny to you having known the background of all this, <laughs> but it, I, I honestly, I mean, and that's not to say the others are bad. I, I mean, honestly, I thought the others were very well run and, but I mean, in knowing you and Nunna, I've heard some, some horror stories from other, from other festivals and this one. And it just seems like this is the tightest one. Yeah. What do you think contributes to that? 
we just love what we're doing. I mean, when it comes down to it, me and Nana started this festival because we wanted to put up things that we wanted to see or wanted to be doing ourselves. So it's not like we didn't have money. We don't have money. We're constantly applying for grants and getting rejected. But we love this thing so much that we won't let it be any other way. And so rather than focusing on like, oh, we can provide experiences, high class, this opening parties, blah, blah, blah. We got really lucky with those. But it was never our focus. Our focus was do what we love and bring in people that we will just throw all of our energy at because you guys are awesome. And coming into a fringe festival you're not making money either. It's like <laughs> we're all coming into this from the same place. We're not, you know, some fringes are really lucky and are completely government sponsored and everything. So you have people whose day job it is to run a fringe festival. That was never the case for us. We did this out of pure passion. So we do it because we have to, because we love it. And that's basically, you know, <laughs> that and we don't sleep. <laughs> you know, who, I, needs sleep? Yeah. <laughs> who, who needs sleep who needs sleep well to be fair uh stepner was not not sleeping much in in sweden but that was that was the oh, that was partly the bipolar um <laughs> he, he he uh oh, that was one thing he's talked about with the manic episodes is that he decided that oh, that he just didn't, didn't need sleep the, yeah. the worst time it hit me was uh the first year of fringe and um <clears throat> it was the last day and we were running a massive event me and nana Within the Fringe Festival, we were running the Poetry Brothel in Iceland. And yeah. it was an entire, it's an event that takes over the entire building of a two story place with multiple creations that need to be put up and rooms and feelings of different spaces in just an empty conference room, basically. So, um, I was setting up for that by myself with just my intern who told me I wasn't allowed to call her anything but the festival bitch. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had nothing yeah. to do with that. She was the one. Who, for not That's a good title, though. That's a good yeah. title. So um, the dinosaur coordinator and festival bitch were trying to figure things out. <laughs> and I got the phone call that, hey, so the stage manager for this venue isn't showing up and two volunteers are not showing up for another venue. What oh, do we do? And I yeah. literally, I was on the phone and so tired. I think I'd had four hours of sleep in the previous two days. And I just stopped for a minute and was like, I can't physically answer this. I'll call you. <laughs> and just hold up. I don't know what words came out coherently. And I just went into this very numb place for a minute. <clears throat> My festival bitch came over, made me sit down and said, what am I doing? And I said, can you think for me? Is that doable? <laughs> and, and she said, girl, I don't want to go anywhere near the inside of your head. And I don't blame <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I really wish that it was Thodaller that you had to call because I, I just want to imagine that that moment Thodaller getting a, a call and it doesn't even matter that it's from you and I'm just going <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would I wouldn't answer so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Be, be, no, be, be a terrible, terrible yeah I hate it every chance I get I don't answer it which is really <laughs> great <laughs> I, I mean, just because society tells us we have to answer our phone, yeah. we, we, we're not controlled by our phone. Oh, the best is, I don't know how my voicemail works, so I can't even check it if I wanted to. <laughs> like, if you called and I missed it, that's it. That's the end. There's you no just voicemail. missed it. You just missed it. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I don't know. I don't. I'm just. I'm just so glad that that well, voicemail isn't really much of a thing anymore. No. Because I can't. I can't do a voicemail message. It would be squeak mail. <laughs> I mean, I, I like I I, well, I used to do. I remember uh, like a long time ago when everyone was doing that 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 voicemail where it was just like, "Hey, yeah, I'm kidding. You got my voicemail." Yeah. Well, like, yeah, yeah. But like doing like a professional one, well, like today, it'd be like, "Hi, you've reached uh, Dan, Dan Zern's <laughs> phone. Uh, if if you're hearing the squeaks, you have the right voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a squeak. Leave a squeak after the squeak." Yeah. <laughs> oh, instead of but, a beep, could you have a squeak? I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta ask though uh, for the people that are, are listening that maybe don't know can you explain what the poetry brothel is <laughs> because to me it just sounds it sounds like like you're going to to like like buy a prostitute who's just gonna read poetry to you 
I mean, that is basically what it is. Um, (laughs) (laughs) It's an event that, um, so it focuses on poetry and performance. So we took it a bit above anything. It's a franchise, more or less, not a franchise, but it's all around the world at this point. And ours was an immersive one where we would have one star poet for the night who would get up and do a more traditional poetry reading. But the rest of the event was um, the poet whores, (laughs) as we lovingly called them. You guys have such friendly names. (laughs) Best little bitch. They were in character the whole time, and instead of being a stage show, they were in the audience with you. Thought Hotler, you'd probably lose your shit with anxiety. <laughs> probably, and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I got to bridge uh, many gaps in it because people, especially in Iceland, are not used to immersive theater, and they walked in and they're like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> Who's talking? Why does he think he's from the 1800s and might be a vampire? I don't understand." <laughs> Um, But basically it was the idea of taking poetry back to its roots, which were these kind of more illicit vibes and big and speakeasies and things like that. So we created that kind of ambiance and then people would buy private poetry readings with a poet whore and... Basically, instead of getting sex, you got private poetry. Oh. So, I mean, what I, could possibly be better than that? <laughs> it was it was sex. a lot of fun. It was always a crazy night, and I even got to go in and do some of my poetry, and that was really fun. So, see, I just I just imagine now I'm just imagining sex while yeah. the person's reading you poetry. Yeah. I've done that too. <laughs> all, right, all, right. all right. Not at the brothel. Learning, learning the real jest. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sex can be poetic, so, you know. It can be. Yeah. yeah. It can. It can be, except, except it can't really be in Iceland because in, in Iceland, sex is just getting drunk, having sex. You, you end up with a kid and then you go, all right, well, uh, same time tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's more trash. Tragic, you know, than poetic, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I got so, but with now with the with the Fringe Festival, I mean, you guys, mm-hmm. have, so you have well, all sorts of shows. I mean, the poetry brothel, yeah. So happened. Um, my voice of Tourette's has happened. So there's comedy shows. Oh, there's theater shows. I mean, what are all the ca- kinds of shows that are happening? Because not only do I want to talk about this festival, I, I this <laughs> this could be a promo for next year's Fringe. Absolutely, yeah. No, we've got basically. If you can dream it and it doesn't require us to get you a 50 gallon fish tank and a full three full drum sets on the stage, we're happy to put you up if we can find a venue to get you in. All right, to so, be fair, I actually be, have an idea for a show and no, it needs exactly that. No, so. no to be fair, to be fair, because I know both you and Nanda, you would do that show. <laughs> you, you would you would do that show. You just, you would just not be happy about it at all. Yeah. No, that one was one where we just had to say no because, you know, it was, yeah. That's that a, that, that was, was a real yeah. show. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they needed a, fi- I, I'm probably wrong with the number 50 gallon. I don't know. It sounds like a good number. Yeah. They needed a fish tank that they could submerge a human into that could then be lifted up off of the stage so that the three drum sets could be brought in. <laughs> This was an application that we looked at and just went, no, no, no. you, you let, you let those, you let those guys from Finland perform. Wow. Where they're, they're basically just terrorizing a stage. Yep. (laughs) Fatal Instruments. It yeah. was such a fun show. It was a circus stunt, martial arts, musical, just greatness thing. I loved it. It was one of my favorite shows. Um, and those guys but, are awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saved their asses. And I didn't know I had this in me to be able to do this because they came over with a stunt ladder, yeah. which you know, Iceland being what it is, we have one circus with like 10 guys in it and <laughs> no circus workshops with stunt materials. So on their way over here from Finland, their ladder got bent at such an angle that they couldn't use it. Um, So we had to scramble. We had less than 24 hours to find and replace this ladder or find someone to fix it. I don't know anything about this. How the fuck do you fix a steel (laughs) ladder so that it remains 
and see so that the dude can hop around on stage on the top of it. <laughs> so we found out that you need a welder for this. Yeah. <laughs> so I call, I reached out to one of my friends who worked in uh he super jeeps for tour guides. Mm. Um and he could weld it back into shape, but I had to be there at a very specific time, which was also, I want to say three hours before their show. And it should take two and a half hours to get there, fix it and get back. Wow. So, all right, we'll call that plan B. <laughs> <laughs> Start reaching out to all the circus people that I know. And the thin started calling around too desperately. So we managed to line up another welder who came and picked up the ladder as one of the guys from the circus came in with another ladder. (laughs) So we got the backup ladder in house and we're in the foyer of Technobio, which is uh, the independent theater of Iceland. It's a really great venue. We love working there. Um, Their foyer, however, has pillars of glass mirrors in it yeah. there are like four of them and i never realized that until this guy decides here let me see if this ladder works for me <laughs> and climbs the ladder and starts hopping around <laughs> and I'm just sat there like please don't fall please i can't fix this too <laughs> Wow. So he didn't fall. Um, it ends up all of his falls in the show, I think, are all faked, every single one of them, because I've never seen someone so casually hopping on a ladder and holding a conversation at the same time. <laughs> I'm just getting an anxiety so, now listening to this, you know. Yeah. You see, my anxiety, when I, I, I have two separate parts of my anxiety, the non-functional side and the getting shit done side yeah. so when i go into get shit done side it's like the super moms who lift cars off of their kids yeah. that zone i managed to get into with my anxiety when it comes to it and yeah. so i'm really thankful for that and just wish it would be around more yeah <laughs> i like the, oh, the way your your anxiety works is like it's similar to me i i'm getting anxiety listening to this but but the problem is when i get this much anxiety my Tourette's acts up more, more. Yeah. So here I am, like stroking, like like doing something with my beard. I don't know what this is. I'm just like You're hitting. Stroking? What are you stroking? I'm hitting my You're beard. What? Yeah, what are you stroking? You the camera, I mean. All right. You know what? This became my voice. Is how this is inappropriate. Um, uh, I'm stroking myself. It's just the Tourette's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but uh-huh. but I, I I I have to ask to make this even better. What is what has literally been? the most stressful moment or oh, like the biggest oh, like disaster that has ever happened at the Reykjavik French festival. Ooh. Don't tell me it's us something to do with us. Totally, you guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, 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 the concussed stage manager tech person was pretty big. Yeah. Uh, people dropping out at the last minute. Um, I had one venue treat me like shit one year which I was really bummed about and we chose not to work with them again. Of course not. So that was, that was kind of the worst for me. Like I, I, I grew up in New York and Brooklyn and lived partially there and spent all of my time in Manhattan and not always in the nicest of neighborhoods. So I've never felt unsafe in Reykjavik until that night. That was a really, really rough night for me because I'd never been walked on and treated so poorly by someone in a venue that's supposed to be very inclusive. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of the biggest personally for me. And at that point, me and Sindri had the biggest fight because, of course, it was the fourth day of the fringe. And <laughs> so, you know, once I was able to communicate <laughs> what actually happened, because I couldn't communicate at that point. You know, it was one of those points where he stepped in and the next day made the calls that he needed to, yelled at the people he needed to, and things like that never happened again. And it was a really big learning experience. And we've never had, like, big, massive issues. But, you know, personal shit that goes on, I think. Those can be big. We've never had our... We haven't caught in any venues on fire. And that's (laughs) saying... Because we've done at least three shows with fire, hey, including no. one with fire. <laughs> not, not yet. Yeah. Let's stress this: you have not set any buildings on fire yet. Yeah. You still have no, time. No, no. 
Yeah, I mean, we, oh, there was this one that we so wanted to have here. They couldn't make it for whatever reason. It was a guy who lit a firework and put it in his ass on stage. So, oh, I, 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 I would love to see that. Ring, ring of fire. I love it. I love it. I was, I was hoping so bad that she was going to say there was one venue we really wanted to set on fire. I was not disappointed. <laughs> I don't know. Like she, she continued that statement. I was like, you know what? That's better. That's better than what I was thinking. I mean, but how is it like after a festival? Do you just take a week off and you just like? No. I mean, the last two years I've done like probably the worst thing I could possibly do, which was to go camping with my kids. Oh, so like no stress there. No, 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 no. Um, it's not like yeah. you picked it's not like you pl picked a place like Iceland to go camping in well, where the no. where the weather is 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 like whose line is it anyway <laughs> oh, the place where the weather is made up and who knows what matters <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah pretty much so yeah yeah did you have yeah. do you, like did you ever experience bad weather in those oh, those camping trips yeah <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a question oh, is that you're in Iceland I, come on now um, I think the crown and glory was going with both of the kids by myself the, for the first time and uh, they there was really bad wind and I'm really bad at setting up tents in the best of conditions oh. so the wind hit really hard and I'm just like all right, we're not going home. Let's do this. And I got the shell of it set up, but I couldn't let go of it to put the top part of it over. Yeah. And, all right, kids, go sit in the tent. <laughs> Except I didn't think through fully. <laughs> so the next thing I knew, I'm picking up this outer shell thing, and the tent starts rolling. <laughs> with the kids in it. Wait, did you say? Um, did you say with the kids in it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And being the quality mother I am, I stopped to record this. <laughs> Because, hey, if you didn't have video, it never happened. Yeah, um, I didn't think it through that I should have told them to sit on opposite ends of the tent. So they yeah. were both sitting in the middle of the tent yeah. when it started rolling. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I let them do a few rotations and then caught the tent. <laughs> and right it. it was like, all right, you sit on that side. You sit on that side. Let's try this again. <laughs> What a good mother. Yeah. yeah. You didn't just, you didn't just like go straight to the phone and film it. You gave them a few rotations before you really yeah. started, yeah. started worrying like about that. It's a big carnival ride. Why not? <laughs> I'm so, I'm so glad this story didn't end with, and then I never saw them again. <laughs> they, they just, they just rolled away. And it yeah, went ma, yeah. imagine that. Like, like, but, like I never saw them again, but I got video. <laughs> yeah. If you see these children call this number. <laughs> see your children in a tent <laughs> but yeah no like, to circle it back because like everything circles back so a big part of why i love More working rotations. with voices yeah yeah like like it's rotations <laughs> let's spin this tent um <laughs> that needs to that needs to be our, our new expression <laughs> like like if something's if something's just going back to the start let's uh, say we're just doing more rotations until we get back to where we started oh yeah Yeah, but um, no, it's it's just really interesting because one of the reasons I love uh, what you guys do with my voices have to rise is because it's so relevant to me, like for myself and then being a parent, my daughter has anxiety too. And to see a five-year-old, that was the first time she had a panic attack that I saw. Oh, yeah. It was absolutely heartbreaking and mind boggling that, wow, okay, she's got this too. And it's my job to teach her how to handle it. Right. So that set me through like a whole new level of having to learn about myself and deal with my shit in a whole new way. Yeah. Because how do you explain this to a five-year-old? And now she's eight, almost nine. And, you know, we're still working with things and it's a regular conversation we have. And, I can point out like, you know, our brains all work differently. We've all got different things. Her stepfather also has Tourette's. Yeah. So it's like, I can point out and say, Hey, so you know how Brynjard does X, Y, and Z. That's because that's how his brain works. You know how sometimes you feel like you can't breathe as well as you should. And it's very loud in your head. That's because that's how your brain works. So yeah. it's been really interesting to teach And not keep this silence about it. Oh, because yeah. growing up, I definitely had anxiety. Just no one to kind of tell me that that's what it was. 
I thought there was something wrong with me because I couldn't take a full breath for weeks. Yeah. Right. Did you, and, did you have somebody in your life that would know, did know that what was going on? Did they know? I mean, or just... It, um, I think they knew, but weren't educated enough to know that they knew. Yeah, right. Yeah. So like, they knew that, okay, this is something, it's something we, that it runs in my family. Yeah. So it's something that we know of, but don't know how to do anything about. Yeah. So that was on my mom's side and my dad's side. That's where the CPTSD comes in. All of my alphabet letters there. Um, <laughs> because his, his family was very violent. There was a lot of abuse going on. So while my mom did everything to protect me, like there was literally a rule in my family that any adult could smack any one of the kids except for Jesse, because no one's allowed to lay a hand on Jesse. Wow. I grew up watching, so I didn't realize until a few years ago when I started some therapy here in Iceland that being witness to violence to that level has an effect because my whole life I was just sitting there thinking, I didn't have it as bad as them. I really shouldn't complain. Yeah. I never got the shit out of me. Yeah. Why am I complaining? Why am I upset? Right. I have no right. And it's a lot of learning that, you know, okay, that's not normal. <laughs> like, I remember sitting and watching the movie um, The Wolf of Wall Street, and there's a scene where Leonardo DiCaprio tries to, uh, while he's high, to kidnap his daughter and gets into the car and drives off. And I remember sitting with someone, and he just, like, broke down because it was so sad. And I turned around, and I was like, wait a minute, that's never happened to you? Well, and, yeah. like... I didn't realize that these kinds of things were just that abnormal yeah. and that problematic. So it's a lot of unlearning as an adult, which has been really tough. But, you know, at the same time, it's getting the chance to teach the next generation that, hey, <laughs> these are not the things we're going to be doing. Right. This is not well, this is not what we should do to each other. Yeah. And I, I, have, I have to say, I <clears throat> want one thing. well first of all oh, um because because uh i mean after listening to all of the, all that i just want you to know that it has been an absolute pleasure working with you and being like boom, being able to p perform in the festival that you've done you have done absolutely incredible things and uh i want you to know you. i I, well, I want i know this sounds like the hallmark uh moment of the show and it totally is but at the same <laughs> yeah. time uh, you know, I I, yeah, I do want you to know that because uh, oh, there's a reason we keep wanting you to be a part of this group. And oh, I also want to say that I, you know, it is just been one of the things that's just been an absolute joy uh, doing the show and doing the stand up show and getting to work with who I've gotten to work with is actually the people that have come in later. Oh, like, yeah. oh, no, honestly, yeah. like stepping there, joined the show as a, as a huge fan of the show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I remember when, well, when we asked you to be a part of the, of voices for charity, I was like, oh, I, I remembered very consciously having this moment where I, where I went, I do not want to manage this because I have way too much anxiety. <laughs> um, so I, I, I did a post on Facebook. <laughs> Well, I did a post on Facebook, basically to all my friends. I said, Hey, is anyone looking like anyone looking to get some managing experience? Anyone who's interested in managing an event? Does anyone want to give this a shot? And I remember you came, you came to us and you like, I, I think it was at voices for charity, the charity event that we did that you managed. I think it yeah. was there that you said that you were actually so excited to be a part of this because this was something that, yeah. that, that you had a lot of passion in, not just, not just managing, but actually this topic and you really just wanted anything yeah. to be a part of it. And that that I want as many people on our on our side that that want to help people because because yeah. these, these experiences that we've had to go through, we want to make sure that no one has to deal with this again. And and the fact that you were Absolutely. the fact that you were not only able to use that like that to help out your kids, but but actually, you know, like to think about it in other ways, that's what we want. And that's why you have become yeah. a huge part of the show and you you whether you, whether you are a manager to the very end or you just happen to be on the you know on the seat with us you we want you a part yeah. of us thank you it's it's so great because like my whole life i've always had this very like conflicted dialogue going on inside me of okay keep it together and then on the other hand why shouldn't I be honest about this? I don't believe in keeping secrets. When my mom died, I was 21 and 
found out a lot of secrets that had been kept. And so from that point, I kind of just said, I'm not doing it. I don't want anyone to have to find out something about me after I'm gone because they've gone through my stuff. Right. Let me tell you things instead. Let me be honest. And, you know, at that age, I definitely scared some people because I hadn't quite learned the line between oversharing and, you know, being honest. Yeah. But it served me well. I don't have secrets. I don't keep anything from anyone. And getting to work with people who I can say, like, I remember at some point there was a meeting that we were having. I don't remember exactly what. And a meeting someone with close air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> there, someone close to me was having a an episode a mental health episode and i was able to just say that like hey i can't come in i need to su support someone who needs it right now and everyone was just like cool we'll catch you up after and that was so like i felt awful because i don't want to let anyone down and i want to be there i make it a point to be there at any meeting that i'm needed at but with that one i couldn't and felt awful and just to get that support back at me it was just like whoa Okay, this is good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting. It's interesting you bring that up because that well, that's something that I mean one of the one of the other things that, one of the other reasons why this I mean this specific group is well one of the greatest like groups of people I've ever come in co contact with uh, is it, and we we always refer to ourselves as being like a family and I think one of the main things that because like well we've talked we talked throughout this whole thing about like how we've taken experiences well, from you know childhood or just throughout our lives and we've like use them to help ourselves grow. Mm -hmm. We've used them to yeah. help ourselves learn from these things. And I, I remember, cause like I've always struggled with that, that idea of health comes first. Yeah. Um, but with yeah. this group specifically, I realized we don't, we don't have a choice. I mean, yeah. like there, there have been shows where last minute someone will say, someone in the group will say, I cannot perform tonight. And yeah. I mean, what are, what are we going to, what are we going to do in that situation? Tell someone who's suffering, Hey, you have to suffer for a bit longer so that we can get some attention. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's yeah. just, it's just, yeah. we have to be, we have to understand there's like that. There is no other, like another, no other option for us. So of course, you know, if, if something's going on, you have to, that, that becomes number one. Yeah. We're just all on yeah. with each other and, and support each other. Like, Hey, I, I can't make it to, tonight. And we were just like, yep, put your health first. Yeah. And occasionally yeah. we do ask why. And that, that, has, <laughs> that has led to some interesting answers. But <laughs> yep. Yeah. Because we're not going to, uh, we're, we're just curious as a friend. You know, we're not like, why? What's your excuse? You know, you, have, you, have, you, you better have to have a good excuse, uh, bailing on us or something. But oh, thought, some of the doctors know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thought, why are you not doing the show tonight? Uh, Stepped there, put on his socks, and it gave me anxiety. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's a strange reference to a bit that like nobody no, 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 I, know, I, know. I remember that one <laughs> but but uh, no well to talk about voices for charity though because that's how that's how you got on board with us um well, yeah. again weird way to put it i understand um uh, but <laughs> but uh like so so let, let's talk about this a bit though because i mean and, and this is definitely a project i want to do again i i yeah, we need to do that again we oh, really yeah. do i mean ever since we did this this was a charity event that we did uh we we raised uh oh we raised money for for three organizations here in iceland uh one was for the tread organization mm -hmm. to some token uh we did uh Einkver for some token which is the the, the autism Mm -hmm. organization yeah. and then we uh raised uh, uh money for get help mm -hmm. which is uh kind of the it's kind of like the the general mental health um, yeah, yeah, yeah. organization yeah. yeah i mean it was just such a blast i think we had like 14 yeah. spot well it was like 20 sponsors actually something like yeah, that it was crazy. yeah yeah it was a it was a really fun thing for me because i have a background in nonprofit fundraising in the u.s which is absolutely nothing like iceland <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was a major, major learning experience for me because I had no idea what to do. I was not very fluent at Icelandic at that point. I've gotten much better. I can start writing emails now. Nice. So, <laughs> but, um, that's that's good. To, that's good to know because your next assignment. No, no. <laughs> I can't use that as an excuse anymore. Can you delete that part, Dan? Yeah. If you deleted it, never. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, it was a really interesting thing to learn because I had no clue what I was doing and just said, yeah, I've got experience in this. I could totally do it, not realizing just how 
culturally different Iceland was in terms of fundraising. So just finding people, first of all, I learned that no one will ever give you money for anything ever. Um, but they're willing to give you their stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. That was just, yeah. And I never expected to get so much stuff in hand to be able to, you know, what did we raffle it and things like that. And yeah, I would love to do that again for that sure. Fun. I, 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 there were, I saw there were two moments of that. There were two of my favorite. One, one was because of how awesome it was. And the other was because of how disastrous it was. Um, <laughs> But mom, my one of my favorite things was literally uh, when when Jess came up to me at one point. I was I was like, Jess, I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm freaking out a little bit. And she goes, Dan, that's my job. That's my job. I mean, you freak out. You put it on me. I'm I'm the manager. You put all the problems on me. And I'm like, I'm gonna have so much fun with this. <laughs> every time. Every time literally every time there was a problem i was like jess and she's like dan i've got it taken care of and i'm like thank you <laughs> i for some reason managing and like doing event production stuff it just puts me in a zone where i can take care of it and if there's a problem i'll do it you know yeah. it's i'll take care of what needs taken care of and i think quick on my feet yeah. so i've had running an event had a last thing where the credit card machine wasn't there so i figured out how to use an app for transfers i mean it's crazy stuff that i've had to go through yeah. so managing the crazies works. <laughs> i mean isn't it like part of the having anxiety you always expect the worst so you you you're prepared, oh yeah you're prepared for everything hell yeah every date that i've gone on it's like yeah i'm prepared for this to be an absolute disaster so anything better than that i'm gonna be thrilled <laughs> Well, well, I really need to be pleased with that. <laughs> well, to talk about what a one disaster. I mean, because to be fair, that 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 event went off with like quite easily. Well, no, nah, not yeah. easily, but it it went off like quite well. Oh, and and the thing is, there was one moment though. I remember uh, we so so one of the sponsors. Actually, I think it was two of the sponsors. Uh, you you had like a bag with. Yeah, I see. I see. Like the smile starting on your face because you're starting to be like, I remember that. Ah, there I'm still thinking on it right now. This is my yep. I totally know what you're talking about, <laughs> face. All right. Well, well, we're we're getting there. So basically, what happened was, I remember. I remember. So she delivered. Like it was a couple of. of oh my god! I just remembered. <laughs> yep, it was a couple of the uh, of the uh, the spa sponsored prizes. Uh, in a bag to the secret seller. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, well, one of the people that was working there, she was like, all right, now put this somewhere safe. And they put it in like the dumb waiter, you know, the elevator that goes up. <laughs> yeah. But they, they didn't put it far enough back. Yeah. So when, when the elevator went up, it slid underneath the elevator. And then we had no way of getting to it. Yeah. Also, no way of knowing what the fuck happened to it. <laughs> so so yeah. we thought someone stole it. Yeah. yeah. So, so we were, we were thinking someone snuck into the, into the dumbwaiter and just stole this. It was chocolate and a gift card <laughs> yeah. to like a, yeah. like to, I think it was a 17 sorter. The, the, the cake company. Yeah. Oh, and they, and oh no, it also had the poetry brothel stuff in there. Uh, see, we're just, yeah. we're just doing some more rotations back to the start yeah, of this. And in the tent. <laughs> I love that ever, almost every episode of you notice that we've had a moment where we just circle back to the beginning. Oh yes. But, but <laughs> so we had this moment where like, like a couple of, or a few of us, like at, at the cellar, we went to the computer and we were checking the security cameras, trying to figure out. At one point, we we're like, "Okay, so that's where Jess comes in. That's yeah. where that's where she came. All right, she got to the she got to the all right. The, she handed it off. It went into the elevator, and then at one one point, we literally went to the elevator. I took my phone for a flashlight. Yeah. We looked in between yeah. the crack, and I'm like, "Oh, oh. motherfucker, <laughs> that's where." <laughs> and and no joke, no joke. We solved half the issue. We we. I remember. Yep. What, what, I remember that because you came to me in a panic that the chocolate and the gift certificates are missing, and I said, "No problem. There is a grocery store around the corner that sells that brand of chocolate. I'm going to buy four massive bars of that chocolate, <laughs> so our sponsors are still represented, and we will deal with the gift card by, say, printing something out or writing it on the back of a postcard and saying." This is your prize. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but then, 
<laughs> but for the for we did get the gift card out though, and I remember this because I MacGyvered the shit out of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> what I did, what I remember, what I did, we had like this. So we had, a, <laughs> I'm trying to remember. It was it was uh, we had a long pole that like. Like was already damaged at yeah. the secret cellar and it was plastic. So I bent it and then I put duct tape on the end of it. <laughs> and I was able to I was able to like like fish it fish through it yeah, fish it through the crack. Yeah. And oh, this sounds so dirty. And <laughs> and then I like I, I got the duct tape to to get the, the gift cards and I pulled them out. And literally, literally I have never prou- or felt prouder in my <laughs> life. And we have won awards <laughs> with this show. But I I MacGyvered so, so some gift cards out of that dumb waiter. Oh yeah, I, that, that was a proud oh, moment me. in my life. Yeah, congratulations, man! You, you, you're a hero. Oh, I, I ran to the store and bought some chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I remember you you brought the chocolate back, and I remembered thinking like I like I was I was just coming out of like a panic attack, so I was like, should I just eat the chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone and bought more. It's okay. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But like, part like part of me literally wanted to go. Jess, we have another problem. I don't know what happened to the other chocolate. <laughs> you, you just have the chocolate smudge on your face. Like, yeah, just like, like, I don't know where it went. I didn't eat him. <laughs> <laughs> but before before we go, because we are getting down to the end of this, but uh, I did want to talk about one thing that uh, I meant to talk about earlier. And it is, it is yeah. one of the reasons why I, I I love doing the charity event. And it is also one of the reasons why I think that the, the Fringe Festival here is my is my favorite. I think it's how small Reykjavik is. I thought I think it yeah. oh, like I mean, with because oh, with the charity event, it was I mean, getting companies on board. Like, I mean, they're all just within like a, a 10 minutes walk, you know, from each other. So yeah. like getting to go th- like getting to go places like it, like with the chocolate, you just went around the corner. It well, worked out with, yeah. with, with the fringe festival. I mean, it was literally like, I, I remember we did when we were in Sweden, uh, which you were not there for though. I, I, I remember, uh, you're, you're, st- I remember. you're starting to remember. Okay. I remember, uh, Basically, like with there, the I think one of the things that was weird for me was everything was so spread out. I mean, all the venues. Yeah, hmm. they got, they also face a lack of venues like we do, so they struggle with that a lot. I know. But 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 with with Iceland, what you guys have have kind of in a in a, a sense capitalized on is all the venues are so close to each other, except for one, except for one. Uh, <laughs> But, but like all of them have been so close to each other. So like if someone wants to see five shows in a day that are all at different yeah. venues, they can do that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's something that, that, that you guys have gotten very lucky with and fortunate with. Yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's been absolutely my favorite thing about it. Even though I've been so stressed, I haven't actually gotten to see any of the other shows. Oh, only, yeah, well, oh, only you're the running one. your own. Mini, you're running your own mini festival within the festival, so True. I just remember looking at you guys when the seller proposed having shows from noon to midnight every day. <laughs> That hit my anxiety. I will say it. it was, I just looked at that, and I think it was the first time that, without really missing much of a beat, I said no, Mm-mm. no, no, too much. I can't do that. I, I, I remember just looking at you, and you had you had this look on your face, like guys, let's get fucking real here. <laughs> let's let's get real. You are not pulling this off. <laughs> We're not with audiences. Like, who goes to a show at noon on a Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> we were we were so ambitious. We were like, guys, we are gonna we are gonna pull this off. We are going to be the venue. And you guys were just like, guys, take a take a knee, <laughs> take a breathe, knee. breathe, and think of it. <laughs> oh, I I remember being uh, with Helke Stein and my friend. He had a show at the Edinburgh Fringe, and that was eleven yeah. in the morning. Okay, but the the show I mean, it was it was it, some- I mean ten people and it was a full room. <laughs> yeah, right. It was not a big I mean, venue. He told me some horror stories of the other fringes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that that was a fun, fun, you know, doing it at, at, at eleven in the morning. Uh, you know, before. Yeah. I do wish though that you could have been there in Finland with us when we walked by the by like the their office. Yeah, and we just say, here, hey, it's Tourette's, and I went. <laughs> Where? (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but I know. All right, so we we are getting next now. time you guys tour. I want in. Yeah, you yeah. need management. You need a manager oversight. Also, because oh my god, it just sounds like such fun stories to come out of there with. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So I secretly plan on crashing your next tour because yeah. holy shit, it's gonna be a good time. You will see a lot of Elvis boobs. <laughs> that's just that's the part of the uh, uh, just the trip. I'm, uh, who, I mean, you're talking to me. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just a lot of Elvis poops. That's that's that's, yeah. that's traveling with uh, us. All right. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are getting down to the end of the yes. the interview or the episode. I had I had to end on Elvis boobs. I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, we are always talking about Elvis ticks, and sometimes it sounds like Elvis tits. So yeah. I, I get confused. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, first of all, <laughs> Jess, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. Thank you for having me, guys. And thought thought Oliver, thank you for being the co-host. Oh, thank you so much for uh, asking me to to be with you <laughs> again for allowing him to not leave. <laughs> right. And just where can where can people find out more information about about the Fringe Festival? Yeah, we've got a website. It's rvkfringe.is, and we're on Facebook, Instagram. Basically, if you just search for Reykjavik Fringe, we're the only Reykjavik in the world. You'll find us. <laughs> Yeah. Not the only Iceland in the world, but, but we are not a no, no. we are not a supermarket. <laughs> no, it is very fun to have Iceland in Iceland. Yeah, so. right. <laughs> and to the listeners, thank you so much for listening. If you guys have any uh, questions or topics you want us to talk about on the podcast, feel free to send them to us at info at mvhtshow.com. That's info at mvhtshow.com. If you want to find out more information about us, you can find us on on Facebook and Instagram at my voices at Tourette's. Oh, we have Twitter at MVHT Show. Uh, you can find me uh, on on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And at, Grindr. Yeah, and, <laughs> not Grindr. Uh, at at Dan Zarin Comedy. Uh, and uh, you can find Thodaller on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you can find him on TikTok. Yeah. At, at uh, what is it? Thor Thor Holler eighty three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, or you can search uh, Thor Icelandic comedian. Yep. Boom, to find you uh, and uh, check out all these links. Uh, also, uh, if you. If you like the podcast and want to support us, check out paypal.me slash mvht show. That's paypal.me slash mvht show. That's where you can send us all your money. And uh yes, do it. And we'll use we'll use I so, need to go on a tour with them. Yes. <laughs> we want to use this so that Jess can come on tour with us and go on all these places. And hopefully some places that will, you know, will uh, that she'll just go there and be like, I want to start a fringe festival here. Let's do this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but also, this episode has been brought to you by Games the Studio, where we're recording Secret Cellar, Iceland's first and only comedy club, and Smarty's Volcano Sauces, the greatest hot sauces I've ever had in my life. And uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify or, or any of those, uh, oh, feel free to like and follow or subscribe, or whatever it is. And if you like the podcast, give us a five star review. Hell yeah! If you didn't, give us a one star review. Fuck it, uh, fuck it. Just give us a one star review. Tell us you hated us. Tell us it sucked. Tell us what you didn't like. That's we'll get better. It. Well, yeah, well, well, uh, it suddenly I turned into a New York podcast. It's wow. it's from Brooklyn. We don't. Oh, I should have done this in my New York accent hey, the whole time. Hey, you know, Bye. I'm doing a podcast here. Hey, hey, you know, hey, we got to start over again. Hey, rotate it. Start no, rotate it. it. Okay, hey. here we go. Do some rotations. Hello and welcome to my voices of Tourette's, and that's why we got New York accents. Let's All right, do this. Forget about it. Let's do it. But yeah. but, but any, anyway, uh, but hey, yeah. I'm taking over here. <laughs> I'm taking over here. Uh, but yes, give us the most honest reviews ever so we can work on this and make it the best we can. Other than that, thank you for listening and check out new episodes every Tuesday. 